Today I'm sharing 10 things I quit over the last few years to majorly simplify my life. I've found one of the best ways to simplify is to find those things that you don't really need to be doing and just cross them off your list. I've actually quit a lot of things over the years, but here are 10 that really stood out to me. Stay tuned for number nine because it's something new that I quit doing and some people might even think it's controversial. While a lot of these ideas apply to my life, my hope is that you might be able to walk away with some inspiration and tips to simplify your life giving you more time in the day and peace of mind. Let's just jump right in. I quit watching TV. I very rarely, if ever, put the TV on. And even then, it's usually something we are watching all together as a family, maybe a show on Netflix or on YouTube. I felt I was wasting way too much time. No longer do that. I crossed it off my list. This gives me more time. And it actually makes me a lot happier to be more in control of what I am consuming. I quit multitasking and I'm not talking about doing a really basic task like folding laundry and listening to a podcast. To me, that makes sense. I don't even know if I consider that really multitasking, but what I'm talking about is more like when I'm on my computer trying to maybe edit a video or do something that I need to get done and then I would have something else going in the background or something going on in my ears. And it was just very distracting to try to do too many things at once. I've found that batch working with a lot of focus actually gets a lot more done way faster and I feel less stressed out. I quit trying to make our house look perfect all the time. I think sometimes when we're looking online or even watching videos or home decor stuff, we can feel as if someone's home looks perfect and looks like that image all the time. And it's just not the case. I've been into so many different homes and people live in their homes and things come out. And if kids live there, they're bringing stuff out all the time. I have a two-year-old right now and let me tell you, he doesn't just keep his toys in his room where we store them. He brings them out into the living room. He doesn't want to put them back. And then my other two boys, it's the same situation. Even me, my husband, our homes are lived in and they don't look perfect all the time. I would say if you dropped over to my house at a random time of the day, you are going to see stuff out of place. <laughs> it's going to look like a mess. Just keep that in mind and don't waste too much of your day trying to keep your home looking perfect. I was wasting a lot of my day, especially when my two older boys were young. I wasted a lot of time just continually putting away toys as they brought them out. It's not worth it. We usually reset at the end of the night and then that's it. We start with a fresh day and then I just, I don't worry about it much throughout the day. If you're getting some value out of this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and also make sure you comment and let me know what you've quit. This is something I quit kind of recently. I stopped thinking of my wardrobe as a capsule wardrobe where everything has to be mixed and matched. I don't know why I got it in my head that all the colors needed to work together and it needed to be a certain type of style. Every time I would look up how to improve my wardrobe, that was the type of advice that I saw and it just never worked for me. Now that I don't really care if things can be mixed and matched and certain items can stand alone on their own like a dress, it just simplifies everything and I don't have to think about my clothes all that often as long as I focus on everything fitting correctly, looking the way I want it to look, then I don't have to worry about do they all look like they work together. By simplifying my life, quitting all those things I don't need to do, it has allowed me to have more time in my life for the things I do enjoy and need to get done, which is working out. And that brings me to today's sponsor, Get Healthy UTV. One way to fit a workout anytime, anywhere is with Get Healthy UTV. I can do this in my living room, in my office, in my spare time, whenever I have an extra moment. Get Healthy UTV is your online resource for workouts, healthy tips, and fitness inspiration. Some of the workouts I have loved are kickboxing, dance, meditation, and low impact, but they have so many more options as well. As a member, you'll have access to hundreds of Get Healthy UTV's workouts and live Q&A sessions with their trainers. Get Healthy UTV is always adding new workouts to keep you motivated and coming back for more. You can join their active community to ask questions, share ideas, and stay motivated. The first one 
1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a full year of premium membership to Get Healthy You TV for only $1.49, valid for new members only. And a big thank you to Get Healthy You TV for sponsoring today's video. I know this one works for a lot of people, but it didn't work for me, so I quit having a cleaning schedule. Now I just clean my house as I see that it needs to be cleaned. If I see dust, I dust. If I see the bathrooms looking like a mess, I clean it. I don't pre-clean. I don't have one day a week where I have to clean my house because that's the day I decided that I'm going to clean my house. I do clean seasonally where I just try to kind of reset and clean our whole entire house in maybe a few days just to kind of reset it but I no longer have any kind of weekly cleaning schedule. This just works for me. When I see spills on the floor, I vacuum and clean it at that moment. I quit worrying about things that I have absolutely no control over. And the example I'm going to give will apply to any parent out there. Uh, this is just the well, one thing that really pops in my head, which is you really don't have control over your kids. <laughs> I mean, before I had kids, I thought that you could control kids and only have them do certain things. And then now that I have three kids, I've realized that no, that is not true. They're their own people. And the example I have, we make our kids food and we put it in front of them. A lot of the time they don't want to eat it. I used to worry about this. Like, are they not getting enough vegetables, protein, whatever it is. And then I started to think, you know what, when I was a kid, Nobody cared what I ate. I'm not trying to be mean or anything to my mom. She made healthy food, but if I didn't eat it, that was on me. And she didn't say, oh, you're not getting enough this and that and whatever. And I've grown up to be a healthy, strong adult. I'm fine. I don't have any problems or deficiencies and nothing from my childhood has scarred me by not eating a certain thing. I try not to worry about these little insignificant things that truly don't seem to matter in the long run. One of the best ways I stay clutter free is I quit shopping, going into stores when I don't really need something. So when my kids were little and I was a full-time stay-at-home mom, no business, no nothing else going on, I had a lot of free time. I mean a lot. And I would get bored sitting at home with two little kids with no stimulation. So I would head out to the store and maybe I needed one thing, but then I would just peruse all the aisles. I would inevitably bring things home that we probably didn't really need, or maybe I didn't even, I wouldn't have bought it had I not seen it. So in other words, I quit going into stores just to wander around and see what catches my eye. And this did quite a few things. It helped us to stay clutter free and it also saves us a lot of money. This one builds on the quit shopping. I also quit overthinking every purchase. I think when we become clutter free, we don't want to add a bunch of stuff to our home. We don't want to waste money. Sometimes you can get into the habit of overthinking. And this is me for sure. Writing it down and looking up every review, causing so much wasted time, over analyzing whether I need the item, will I use the item? And I've just quit doing that. Like if I feel I really need something, I just go and get it. It's great to find a deal. It's great to find a coupon if you can. I I just don't want to waste time overthinking every purchase. We've finally made it to number nine, and this is really going to apply if you have kids, but you might be able to apply this same concept to other things as well. I've recently quit folding my children's clothing. There is a really good reason for this. It's not just me being lazy, but what I would do previously is I would fold all their clothes really, really nice, and I'd put them in their drawers, and I would come in maybe the next day, two days later, just to see all of that time and energy wasted. All the clothes are in a big giant mess because they couldn't find what they were looking for and it was just a jumbled nightmare. So now what I do is I sort their clothes, they help me a lot of the time, just lay them flat and I put them in the drawer and they can do whatever they want with them at that point because I have a two-year-old, I have an almost eight-year-old and a 10-year-old and let me tell you, they are not into keeping things nice the way they were put in there. Once in a while, they will fold their own clothes if they want to, but other than that, I just take them out of the dryer, straighten them out, put them in the drawer, and that is it. I've saved so much time, energy, and irritation because nothing's more annoying than when you go in and see all that time and energy wasted. I think this can apply to other things as well, 
So for instance, I rarely fold our sheets because I usually take them out of the dryer and put them straight back on the bed. I also barely ever fold our towels because I usually take them right off where they're hanging, put them in the washer and dryer and put them straight back on the hanger where we're gonna use them again. So see where you can apply that to, but that is something that I've recently quit doing. This is kind of a two for one, which is I've quit being busy and I've also quit trying to cram so many things in my day back to back. I've been trying to give a little bit of breathing room between each task. So if I'm going to do the laundry, then I'm going to take that out, finish it, and then instead of just jumping straight into the next activity, I might do something a little enjoyable and give it a little bit of space and I've also just tried to change my mindset instead of always saying quickly, hurry, <laughs> when we don't actually need to be hurrying or doing things quickly. One thing my husband always used to make fun of me for is I would always use the wording, I'm gonna quickly use the bathroom. And he'd be like, just take your time. And he would laugh every time. And this was way back when we first started dating. I think the language we use like, hurry, quick, I'm so busy, makes us feel rushed and busy. There's just really no need for that. We're not on any kind of time constraint 90% of the time. It's very rare where we really do need to hurry. Courtney Carver has a quote that I love, which says, doing more things doesn't make you a better person. It makes you a tired person. And I can relate to this so much. I hope that these 10 things that I've quit doing might inspire you, or you may want to quit these 10 things as well. If you're new here, you can hit the subscribe button to join my channel and you can click right here to watch 10 mini habits that improve my life. See you in the next one. Bye.